Okay, we are ready for the pre-event press conference for round 16 of the MotoGP World Championship here at the Misano World Circuit, Marco Simoncelli for the Nolan Grand Prix of Emilia Romagna. Seven riders are on stage with us here today, of course, starting with Monster Energy Yamaha rider, Frenchman Fabio Quattararo. Tenth podium of the year uh, in 2021, coming in Austin last time out, 52 points ahead with three races to go. And his first match point in the World Championship here this weekend. Uh, to Fabio's right, we have Pekka Bagnaia of the Ducati Lenovo team, of course, uh, riding here from Italy on his home circuit. Second overall in the championship, four podiums in his last five races and the winner here when we were racing one month ago. Uh, to Fabio Quattro's left, we have Marc Marquez of the Repsol Honda team riding from Spain. Second win of the season in Texas, last time out and fourth here in our most recent visit. Also on the front row, we have Enea Bastianini from Italy riding for a Sponsorama Racing Ducati. An impressive sixth place for him last time out in the US. And of course, on the podium here for the first time in MotoGP uh, in Misano last month. Uh, on to the back row in the center, we have Luca Marini riding for for the Sky VR46, the sponsor of our racing Ducati team from Italy. A 14th in Austin and the only rider other than Fabio Quattararo to have finished every race so far in 2021. To Luca's right, we have Valentino Rossi, also from Italy, riding for Petronas Yamaha SRT, racing in Italy for the final time in his career. And a late addition just to uh, Luca's left as well. We have Darren Binder from South Africa, who's with us following an announcement made earlier. More on that to come. There'll be no social media questions uh, here today, so I'll just uh, start off with you, Fabio. Uh, the moment has arrived, uh, Fabio. Your first match point to become the MotoGP world champion. 52 points ahead with 75 available. How are you feeling as we return to Mizano knowing that? Yes, of course, uh, feeling really good, um, but to be honest, my head is not really on that part, you know, of, uh, of the championship. I think we need to take it like a um, normal race, but of course we know that on Sunday can happen something, uh, something special, but um, at the moment, I think, uh, first of all, Friday and Saturday, we need to, to plan it like, uh, like the beginning of the year. And, um, and then on Sunday we will see the amount of risk that, uh, that we will take. But um, Friday and Saturday will be a normal situation for, for the moment and then we will see what, what happens. You mentioned risk there, Fabio. The last time we were here in Mazzano, you took a lot of risks to try and uh, track down Pekka Banya for the race victory. If we're in a similar position again on Sunday, do you take as many risks or do, does the championship then start entering your mind? We will see. Uh, is how I like to, to race, but uh, I've never been in, in that situation. Um, I think last year I learned a lot uh, how to... Not how to fight for a championship because I, not, I didn't have really the chance, but you know, to be a leader of the championship for many races last year was, was an important step for, for my experience. And, uh, and I think this year is much more easy, let's say, to, to have it. So let's see, but uh, at the moment it's, it's just a normal race. Just uh, we will see the, the risk that we will take on, on Sunday. Fabio, thank you very much and the best of luck this weekend. So we now come to Pekka Banyaya. Pekka, second overall in the World Championship. A good run of podiums at the moment. And of course, we return to Mizano where you had that fabulous victory one month ago. Uh, 52 points down in the championship is a lot. But in many ways, do you feel the pressure is off or, or is this a weekend win at all costs? For me, the only thing that I can do is uh, win to try to, to stay with in, the, in the fighting for the championship. We know uh, that 52 points are a lot, uh, but we, we will try. Uh, still, uh, we have the possibility, so we will try. Um, will be different this weekend, because the condition is uh, more, dif more different, and uh, looks like that can rain sun, uh, Friday, Saturday, so, so the working for the race can, can be more difficult. But let's see. Uh, for sure, this weekend I have to go in and uh, try to to make something. 
Whatever happens this year, Peko, you've had a, a very strong season, uh, a strong end to 2021. Uh, have you exceeded your own expectations? If someone had said to you at the start of the year that you'd be here in Mazzano with three races to go, second overall, still in the championship, just would you have taken that? For sure. Um, uh, our ambition is always to, to, be, uh, to improve every time. And uh, uh, looking at my last two uh, seasons in MotoGP, um, was not the year to try to win the championship, this one. Because I was struggling a lot in the past years, I crashed a lot and uh, uh, I broke my TB last year, so um, I had problems. <clears throat> so this year the, the objective was to, to continue my uh, growing and uh, and I think that after the summer break we did a step in front and in the last race is another one. So um, I'm happy with the work we are doing uh, this year uh, in the last races. But for sure, um, the work we are doing this year uh, can be better for next year. Paco, thank you very much. Uh, good you. luck here this weekend. We now come to the most recent race winner, Mark Marquez, Repsol Honda. A stunning performance in Austin. Mark, great celebrations. I'm sure it felt fantastic. But we do know that uh, we come back to Mizano. It will be a tougher test. Fourth here last time. Having tested here a few days after, are you confident that you can improve on that here this weekend? I mean, uh, we will see. Of course, uh, I arrived here in Misano with the feeling of the test uh, more than uh, Austin race because Austin we know that is a special circuit and still I feel a big difference between left and right corners. But uh, but anyway, let's see. I mean, Misano one was uh, better than what uh, we expect before the race. In the end, I finished fourth and. Uh, was a result that uh, I didn't expect on, on that Sunday. But uh, this weekend, uh, we will see, we will try to do another small step. Uh, try to be in the top five will be a, a, good, uh, a good result. But it's true that uh, here in Misano or Portimao, I would like to, to be a bit faster on the right corner circuit. So let's see if we can. Mark, you've always been notoriously strong in Saxon Ring in Austin, and of course you picked up victories uh, there. After the win in Austin, did you feel physically stronger than you did after the win in Saxon Ring? Did you feel maybe a little bit more like the old Mark? Yeah, keep improving, but uh, too slow for my for my. I mean, uh, it's really slow. I mean, the the, the comeback uh, is difficult, even like this. Uh, I'm able to ride in acceptable way, and I'm able to to finish in the podium in uh, in three times this this year. But uh, still, it's not the, the the way the performance that I will like. So uh, we need to keep pushing, keep going, three races uh, to go. And uh, but what I predict the second part of the season is what what's going on. Uh, I'm constant in the top five positions. I'm uh, closer to the top guys. So this is was the target, and uh, at the moment I can achieve every every weekend. Great. Thank you very much, Mark. Good luck this weekend. Uh, also then, on the front where we now come to Anaya Bastianini. Uh, Anaya, before we talk about this weekend in Mizano, let's just recap on Austin. You must have been really, really happy to back up your podium here with another top result in Austin from 16th on the grid to 6th. How satisfying was that? Yeah, you know, I'm uh, very happy about my last three races and... Uh, here, uh, two week, three weeks ago, I win, and uh, it's a incredible uh, for me. And also in Austin, we have uh, did a good, uh, good race, and uh, it's a really difficult also uh, with the condition because it was uh, really hot, and uh, to finish the race uh, is not stay easy. But um, I'm happy for. Uh, for the work with the guys uh, inside the inside the box, and uh, we have to uh, a good a good step, and uh, now we have to continue in this line because uh, it's uh, important, and uh, I'm confident for this uh, Misano too. It's a very nice track. I like a lot, and uh, it's difficult. It's uh, different. Also, the the condition is more cold. Respect the last race, but uh, we have to be faster in this second race. 
And Aya, when we, we were last here, your speed was incredible. From 12th on the grid, you made some excellent passes. At one point, you were catching the, the leaders. If, if your qualifying is better here this weekend, do you think the same sort of performance is possible, or are you not putting too much pressure on yourself? Yeah, I have to work a lot uh, in this part of the, the, um, the weekend because uh, always uh, uh, the qualifying is... Uh, a disaster for me and uh, here in Misano is the uh, one of the, the best and uh, I have to to try to do again better uh, during this weekend to be more competitive also uh, in the race. Great, thank you very much and I good luck this weekend. Now we now come to the back row, we'll start with Luca Marini. Luca, it's great to catch up with you before the end of the season, of course, here at your home race as well. Um, looking at the season, to finish every single race as a rookie is quite an accomplishment and it certainly helps, I'm sure, for you to learn MotoGP. How would you analyse your 2021 season so far? Well, for sure, uh, I would like to be a little bit more forward, uh, especially about uh, the results uh, in, uh, in the races. Um, but anyway, I, I'm quite happy about uh, the overall uh, season. Uh, like you said, I finish all the races, but it's not something that I'm proud of it. I prefer to stay more in front and then maybe sometimes uh, do some mistakes. Uh, but this, uh, uh, with this, I'm able to understand how the tires drop a lot during the race, how the bike works and how the track uh, changes uh, during uh, 14 minutes. And it's great also to understand uh, about my, my body, in uh, which area I have to work more, because with the Ducati I'm struggling a little bit uh, in, the, in the physical area. Uh, we worked a lot on the ergonomic side of the bike uh, and also try to use less strength for uh, a, a less physical bike. Um, I'm quite happy now at the level uh, that I am uh, compared to the start of the season. I, I'm at more confidence and I'm feeling better, but uh, we need to do some uh, improvements in these last three races because I would like to stay in the top 10 position. Yeah, and, and Luca, is that the, the main goal now, to build for 2022? I'm sure you're so excited about what lies ahead for you at next season in your second year in MotoGP. When you look back at your Moto2 career, you're quite a methodical rider. You take your time to build up your speed, but when you get there, it's there. Uh, do you, would, you, would that be fair to say? Mm, no, sincerely, yeah, maybe it looks like, like this, but uh, I just... In five years, I can uh, achieve and arrive to MotoGP, so I'm not uh, so slow to understand the, the situation. Uh, I think that uh, when I arrived to the World Championship in Moto2, was a, li a literally completely different world uh, comparing to European Championship. Uh, and also with the team forward, we missed something on the technical side, so it was not easy at the beginning. Uh, arrived to the top guys, but then when the, the, everything was at 100%, I was there and I was really fast and strong, and when I feel comfortable on the bike, I can feel that I can do everything on the bike and be very strong also in the race, so I would like to have these feelings also in these three last races for improve my, my position in the race. Luca, thank you very much. The best of luck here this weekend. And we now come to Valentino Rossi. Uh, Valentino, this weekend you start your 430th uh, Grand Prix race and it's your last on Italian soil. How do you feel about that coming in? Are there a lot of emotions for you to, to come here knowing that this will be the last time you, you race in Italy? It's a, it's a bit a strange situation because it's already the second time here in, uh, in Misano. And uh, the second race is always uh, particular because uh, it's, uh, uh, usually we race just, uh, just one time. But in the last two years, uh, with the COVID situation, we learn to, to stay in the same, the same track also for more, more than one race. I think it's a, it's a great chance for uh, uh, say ciao to, to, all the Italian, to all the Italian fans. So great to race here in, uh, in Misano, in my home uh, circuit. And uh, I hope uh, that uh, we can have uh, a good weekend for, uh, for the weather because uh, this period in Italy is a bit more difficult. So I hope to have a dry, 
uh, dry weekend, especially, especially Sunday, and uh, try the maximum uh, during the weekend for, uh, for being competitive on the race. Valentino, you mentioned your fans, and I would just want to, to bring that up. Of course, we're the world. There's huge, uh, loyal fan base for you. Seas of yellow in the grandstands. I'm sure it's extra special when you come to Italy. What would be your message to the fans that have stood by you every single step of the way, that have come here to say goodbye? And, and who are they going to follow when you stop? Are you hoping that your fans then switch over to, of course, your brother Luca, to Pecco? And uh, where, where are all these fans going to go? Like you said, uh, it's, it's a long story. It's uh, more than 400 races, a long, uh, long career, and uh, I just have to say thank you to, to, to everybody because uh, uh, I had uh, and I have uh, an incredible support uh, all over the world, especially in Italy, but more or less everywhere. So. Uh, I give always the maximum. We, we enjoy a lot uh, together because uh, uh, it's a long career with, uh, with uh, a lot of uh, uh, great races. And uh, so we will, we will see on, on Sunday. Anyway, after, after Misano, we will have another, uh, another two races. It's, it's always a, a sad moment when, uh, when, you arrive, uh, when you arrive at the end. But anyway, it was good. We, we enjoy. Valentino, thank you very much. Have a great last race here in Italy. Thanks. Uh, last but not least, we come to Darren Binder. Darren, it's finally been announced. It's been talked about for weeks and months, but you will be a MotoGP rider in 2022 for the uh, new team, the RNF Racing under Raslan Rasli, on the Yamaha on a satellite machine. First of all, congratulations. How excited are you about this challenge coming up? Yeah, first off, I'd just like to say a huge thanks to with you, Yamaha RNF Racing, uh, you know, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, it's, it feels unreal today. Honestly, I feel like I'm in a different world right now. Uh, it's, it's like a childhood dream, you know, to ride MotoGP. Not everybody gets this opportunity, and you know, I definitely never expected it to come from Moto3. So, yeah, I'm super excited, and uh, it's a huge step forward, so it's going to be a really big learning curve for me. But, uh, yeah, I'm super excited. I'm ready to, to work as hard as I can, and uh, let's, it all starts at the end of the year when I get the first, first ride on the, the M1. Darren, it was an opportunity you couldn't really refuse. Of course, there, there are people who are going to ask the question, are you ready? Is it too soon? And I'm sure you've seen all of that on social media. But what are your thoughts about it? Do you feel like personally you are ready? And, and how much will you be asking questions of your brother Brad as well for advice in terms of how things go next year? Yeah, you know, it's definitely, like you said, it's an opportunity that you just can't turn down. It's, it's a no-brainer for me. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a big step. I think I'm going to be asking my brother a lot of questions and uh, I'm going to be trying to follow in his footsteps uh, very closely over over the holiday to train and uh, try and get ready for the bigger bike. But, uh, yeah, I mean, from my side, uh, I definitely feel like I've been in Moto3 for way too long. I feel like I am quite big, so I feel like my, my size should suit the bigger bike a bit better. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a huge learning curve, but uh, you know, I'm I'm up for the the hard work, and I'll do my best to to just try to get stronger and stronger. We look forward to it, Darren. Congratulations, and thank you very much. Thank you. That's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Time to pass over to questions from members of the media, starting with Simon. Hi guys, Simon Patterson from the race. A question for Fabio Paco and Mark to start off with. Uh, how challenging is a 21 round calendar going to be next season compared to this year? The calendar of next year? Yeah, I feel uh, it's going to be great, you know, for me I, I like to go in, let's say, different places. Uh, it's always strange to come to the same track, but we know that is uh, with this COVID situation, or COVID situation, sorry, is uh, is so difficult to to go to that places like out of Europe. So um, for me, it will be it will be nice to is a another step to go back to the normality. And um, I'm really looking forward also to ride the new track in Indonesia. That uh, that looks looks quite fast and great. So yeah, I hope that the calendar will uh, not change anymore. Could be nice. 
could be nice, but uh, we have to see if we can go in uh, some places like Malaysia, to uh, Japan, and uh, Australia, uh, or uh, Indonesia. Uh, we, have, we, we are looking next week for the superbike uh, that we're racing. Uh, no, not next week, no, I don't know. Uh, in Indonesia, uh, but let's see, uh, can be nice. Uh, I would like to go, but uh, it's always very difficult to, in this situation, it's very difficult to go in some places like Australia and uh, Japan, but let's see. Of course, like they say, it's true that uh, we want to go in uh, a lot of parts uh, in the world, but 21 races start to be a big number. So for the future, uh, if we meet, if we want to arrive in uh, in more countries, we need to take out some races because like this, I feel like between 20, 21 races, 22 maximum is uh, is already enough races in a in a year. Paolo Nieri, Gazzetta dello Sport. A question to Valentino. When in Austria you said that uh, it was time for, uh, to stop, you said that you were uh, in peace with yourself, with the decision. A few days ago, there was this interview with uh, Spanish The Zone, when you said that you were a little bit in paranoia, thinking of uh, Valencia, that you are probably not ready to stop. Is it because you are so much in love with your motorbike, that you know that you're going to have still nightmares for a while, that you're not racing? Or that because also at some moment you thought mm, perhaps I could have done one more season and no, but I don't know if you if you see the interview, but uh, for me is is more uh, uh, they take uh, one part of the interview more uh, for uh, write uh, some other pages, but uh, it's not like this. I mean. Uh, uh, what, what I said in the interview is that uh, uh, that in, in Austria everybody asked me how do you feel, but uh, at the end in Austria was just uh, I take the, the decision and uh, become uh, official no? to, to everybody. But uh, anyway, um, I have to stay concentrated and uh, I have to remain focused because I have uh, half, half season. And I said that for sure in Valencia, in Valencia will be will be different because it will be the last time uh, uh, on my bike, uh, the last time on the grid. Uh, so I think it uh, will be more emotional. But uh, so apart that in Italy we, we say a lot of paranoia, but is uh, a way to, to to speak in Italian. But it's nothing uh, so so big. And uh, no, no, I feel uh, I feel good anyway. I don't change my mind. <laughs> Hi guys, uh, Thomas Beaujard from GP Mag in France. Another question for you, Valentino. You've been racing and fighting for a few championships yourself. So what would be your advice to Peko and to Fabio for this race in terms of managing things? That's it. Just for me. <laughs> yeah, I think that uh, the, the difference is 52 points. So. Um, I think that uh, um, Fabio won't close as soon as possible. So try already Sunday because uh, if become longer, uh, always become more difficult. So for sure, uh, he will try the maximum on uh, on Sunday. And uh, Peko, I said already that my advice was uh, uh, to make uh, as Misano one. Uh, pole position, fastest lap, and win the race. <laughs> this is the most clever thing that uh, I can say to Peko. But uh, I think that uh, it's a great, great uh, uh, challenge between Peko and, uh, and Fabio. I think that uh, they deserve to fight for the championship. Uh, it's a shame that Peko lose uh, uh, some point during the season. Maybe uh, not for Fabio, but maybe for the people around can be uh, more fun if, if, if they are more close in the, in the point. But then, anyway, I think it's, uh, it's, it's right like this. Nadia Tronchoni from El País newspaper. Uh, Valentino, how important or is it important for you to uh, end this final race in Misano with a good result? And how capable do you feel to have a good result? I don't know what is a good result now, but... Yeah, it's, it's always it's a bit difficult because uh, every race is uh, we have 
a lot of different things around because uh, I will finish in Valencia, so everybody want to make something special. Uh, and uh, we need a lot of time to try to manage everything. But at the end, the problem is that uh, I'm, I'm still on the track and I'm still uh, on the bike. And uh, the, the difficulty is try to, to share and try to stay concentrated at the maximum because when, already when you jump on a MotoGP, is uh, is difficult and dangerous. So uh, try to stay concentrated. Uh, not uh, think that is the last race uh, in Misano, but uh, that is a real race. And uh, I think that the best way is try to be competitive and uh, try to give the maximum. And uh, a good result can be staying the, in the top ten. Also, if it's not easy. Matteo Aglio from La Stampe GP1. I have a question for the three Ducati riders, so Pecco, Enea and Luca. What uh, do you think about the decision of uh, Ducati to enter in Moto E? And uh, would you like to test uh, the new electric bike maybe next year? Uh, for sure, uh, I'm happy. Uh, because it's a, it's a change is that uh, for sure uh, Ducati knows how to do a bike. And uh, for me, it would be, would be nice to see uh, this type of uh, development. But uh, I don't know if I would like to try. Yeah, uh, also for me, it's a surprise. And uh, I don't know if uh, it's possible to do a, a Desmo electric bike. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, for me, can be with uh, a lot of power, and uh, I want to, to try this bike when uh, when it's uh, possible riding this, no? I, I didn't know this news, uh, but uh, I think it is great. Uh, I don't know if it will be the future, the electric bike, but for sure uh, it it can be so they they want to be prepared they want to be there uh, it's a it's a great opportunity i'm uh, open on this uh, side i have already an electric car uh, and uh, is uh, is uh, nice to to drive so it can be great maybe at the end of uh, the career of uh, a moto gp rider you can do some lap there. We will see. Um, Michel Turco, Motor Review. Question for you, Mark. It's a long time you, di you didn't end the championship uh, without fighting for the title, except last year, but you didn't race at all. So how does it feel? Um, I mean, it feel OK. I mean, of course, uh, when you fight for the championship, uh, you have a extra push, extra concentration. Uh, extra energy even, and uh, when you don't fight for a championship is uh, different. But in the end, uh, I ride my own championship and, uh, and I always try to find a different target, different motivations to, to achieve the, or to approach the weekend in a, in a good way. And in the end, uh, when I achieve my targets, uh, it's like my, my championship, the way to keep motivation and the way to refuel my body to continue my progress. Hi, good evening, gentlemen. Um, my first, Tommy from Spot5 Israel. Um, my first question is for uh, Marcus. Um, I want to take you back to Kota because you took up to your pod to the podium uh, Jenny Anderson, and we um, had a lot of comments about the person you picked to the uh, podium, and I'm not. I'm not sure you understand what impact it has that you took your data mechanic to the podium to celebrate with you. And that was the first woman mechanic that was taken up to the podium. I wanted to know how she is managing along in your team. And did you even think about what effect it has on women and the sport in motorbikes? Yeah, I mean, of course, it's important that uh, in, uh, in our sport that um, most of the people is uh, men. I mean, uh, 
step by step, year by year, uh, women uh, are more and more in the paddock. Uh, and it's important that not only on the press release, not only on the press officer, I mean also on the on the technician side and uh, and even why not uh, in a rider side in the in the future, like in the past, some some women, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, Jenny um, is the first year that uh, that I'm working with uh, with her, and uh, and is a very important person in, inside the group. I mean, in the end, is another one inside, and uh, this is the the most important. It's not uh, like uh, she is, he is. No, is a uh, is another person. She never been in the podium, so uh, my group uh, that uh, Sant is the leader of the group, and no that was agree. Um, they give the, the opportunity to, to be on the podium and it's another kind of motivation and to keep the team in a, in a good atmosphere uh, for the future. And, uh, and yeah, it was nice and uh, as I say, it's an important person uh, in my group. Thank you. And another question please to Valentino. I wanted to know how do you keep concentration when everything is going on and the announcement was so long ago? Uh, yeah, you know, Robert, it's, uh, it's difficult for everybody also in a normal, uh, for a normal uh, MotoGP rider uh, to keep the concentration during the weekend because we have uh, to do a lot of different things that uh, uh, a lot of PR, for example, that for the people around are very important. When for the rider is important just the result of Saturday afternoon. So I'm already in this uh, in, in the same situation, a little bit more extreme. And uh, so you have to, to concentrate and think that uh, the, the important is uh, the result of uh, of Sunday, and after arrive all the rest. And uh, so. You need to manage this situation, but uh, is more or less is the same for for everybody. Before uh, we managed to speak with Casey Stoner during the presentation of the of the weekend, and uh, talking about you stopping and retiring, uh, he said that he has always been learning a lot of things from you on track, even the way you were handling with the fans. And then, uh, so there it was a big uh, rivalry, which changed a little bit in the end because of some issues on track, but uh, he always respected you a lot. And he also said that one of the reasons that he stopped was because uh, he loved the, the two strokes and he didn't like the four strokes bikes. And also that uh, motorbikes to him have to be dangerous to go always to the limit. <laughs> So, what do you think of uh, his point of view? Also about uh, your relationship with him. I, I, I race uh, together with, uh, with Casey in uh, all his career in, uh, in the MotoGP, no? because it, it was not very, very long, because he arrived in 2006, I think, and stopped in 12, in 12, 12, 12, 12, 2012, so we always race together. And, uh, it's not a long time, but uh, he demonstrated his uh, incredible natural uh, talent. And uh, already from, from the first year with the, with the Honda, five-cylinder Honda, he was uh, very, very fast uh, always. So uh, I'm very happy to, to, fight, uh, to fight with him because I think that he's uh, one of the, the faster and wildest uh, MotoGP riders of the, of the history. And uh, about the two strokes, this, uh, we can speak about uh, two strokes and four strokes a uh, long time. And um, I raced a lot with, uh, with the two strokes, and uh, it's, uh, it's clear that the two strokes have uh, um, a great charisma from, uh, from uh, outside and also when you ride. Already from the noise, the, the bike is... Uh, is more a racing bike, a more racing noise compared to the four uh, to the four strokes. Um, but it's like this, you know. Uh, at a certain point, uh, uh, the the world changed, uh, MotoGP changed to the four stroke, and I remember that it was a shock for uh, for for me and from uh, for all the riders because we loved our uh, 500 two strokes uh, machine. 
It's true that uh, when you ride at the limit of the bike, uh, you feel uh, uncomfortable because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very